Hello, I've got a jam-packed episode for you today. Coming up, I'll be showing you how to feed your tadpoles for the very first time, explaining what kind of foods you can use and how to prepare it. Uh, but before we do that, I'm going to take a trip to Sheringham Park here in Norfolk, where I'll be joined from Liam from A Shot of Wildlife, and we're taking a look at a wildlife pond that is absolutely full of amphibians. It's going to be absolutely amazing, so make sure you stick around for the entire episode, because we've got a lot coming up. Welcome to Frogwatch. So today I'm with Liam and we've come down to Sheringham Park to look at this amazing wildlife pond. And not only do they have frogs, they've got toads and newts, all three of the most common amphibian species in the UK are in this one pond. Let's take a closer look. The sight that immediately greets us is this gathering of frogs. These are European common frogs, the most common species of frogs found in the UK, and the same species as the tadpoles I have in my tank. They are sitting on top of a huge clump of frog spawn, but mixed in with the frog spawn wrapped around the vegetation are strings of toad spawn too. This pond is not only home to frogs, but common toads as well. It can be unusual to see frogs and toads breeding in the same pond, as the conditions preferred by these two species are usually different. Toads often prefer deeper water to frogs, but this pond seems to have ideal conditions for both. You might have difficulty telling the difference between a frog and a toad, but don't worry, you're not the only one. Here we can see some confusion, as a male frog has attached himself to a female toad and is attempting to mate with her. There is also a male toad who is not too happy about that and is trying to dislodge the frog and attach himself to the female. This position is called amplexus. Let's go under the water for a better look. Here we can see a more successful pairing of a male toad in amplexus with a female toad. The smaller male on the back grips the larger female and will stay there for some time. During this time, he will prevent other males from mating with a female and will fertilize her eggs as she lays them. Going back to the frog and the two toads, this is called a mating ball when more than one male attempts to get into amplexus with a female. As we watch, we can see a third male make an attack from the side and attempt to claim the female away from the two males already fighting. However, he is unsuccessful and is kicked away. Another interesting feature, if we take a closer look, you can actually see the female is in the process of laying her spawn. In the case of toads, it is in two long strings rather than in clumps like frogs. Unfortunately, in this case, the spawn is unlikely to be fertilized as the frog, which can't fertilize toad spawn, is preventing the male toad from fertilizing the spawn either. But it's not only frogs and toads in this pond. Common or smooth newts also live here. It's the breeding season for newts too, and you can tell the males apart from the females by their darker colour and their large wavy crests along their back and tail. The males vibrate their tails to attract the female. The eggs of the newts will be hard to find, as they lay them individually under aquatic plant leaves which they then wrap around the eggs. A female will lay around 7-12 to 12 eggs per day, up to a total of around 400 over the season. If you want to see more amazing underwater footage and information about the newts especially, make sure you check out Liam's video on the YouTube channel A Shot of Wildlife. I'll leave a link down below. Unfortunately, it soon began to rain and we had to take shelter while we waited for it to stop so we could continue to film these fascinating amphibians. making a, a mad dash for it since it's just about stopped raining. We're going to run over to the pond and uh, have a look there. Well, the rain hasn't really held off much, so uh, we're getting a bit wet here. But we just took a shelter for like 15 minutes, uh, waiting for the worst of the rain to finish. And in that time, uh, some frog spawn has been laid and we completely missed it. Uh, but there's some real fresh stuff right here. And you can see it's, uh, I'll show you in a moment, it's, um, the, the jelly is now beginning to swell. It's also it's really tightly uh, packed up at the moment. 
Uh, really interesting stuff. Take a closer look. There are three large clumps of spawn that were not here just a few moments ago. You can see that the jelly is small and tightly packed around the black embryo in the centre. As the jelly comes into contact with the water, it slowly swells up and will look more like the other spawn that was laid earlier. Well, we're getting a little bit too wet now, so let's go back home and we'll check out how the tadpoles are getting on uh, in the tank at home, where it's a bit drier. And if you want to see some more footage uh, from the underwater in the pond, make sure you check out Liam's video. He's got some great footage of the newts. Definitely go and check that out. I'll leave a description down below. Uh, but yeah, so let's go and dry off and go back home. Back at home and the tadpoles have developed even more since last week. They have now eaten all the jelly from the spawn and are now swimming quite actively around the tank. The jelly was their main source of food, so with that gone, it's now time to start feeding them some extra food. So my setup here is fairly simple. I'm just going to show you how I always feed them and then I'll tell you a few other ways you can do it as well. I always use spinach. It's fairly simple, easy to get it from the supermarket and it's really easy to prepare. All I've got with me here is a kettle which is just freshly boiled and I'm just going to pour this out into the cup. So at the moment, the spinach leaf is quite tough and tadpoles only have tiny little mouths. Um, the idea is to just soften the leaf just a little bit by dipping it into the boiling water. It just makes it easier for the tadpoles to chew on. So all you do is you just dip it in and just swirl it around. Just leave it for 10, 20 seconds, something like that. Maybe not even that. Just until the leaf softens up. That's probably all we need to do. Then I'm just going to cut it up into small little squares and float it out onto the top of the water. It really doesn't take long for the tadpoles to find the leaves and start nibbling. I usually feed them in the evening and then remove any uneaten food the following morning. This just prevents leftover food from rotting and making the water dirty. So just to go over a couple of things just to make sure everything is clear. At this stage tadpoles are herbivores which means they eat plants. Spinach has always been my first choice, but there are other things that you can feed them as well. Romaine lettuce is also apparently a good food for them. And I've never tried it myself, but normal fish food, fish flakes, is a good source of food for them. Uh, the only downside to that that I've heard is that uh, the fish flakes will break up in the water, and if it's not eaten all quickly, it can make the water dirty, so you might need to clean out your tank a little bit more. But um, with the spinach leaves and things, I've never really had a problem with that. Uh, so a word of warning, um, now tadpoles, if they are overpopulated and underfed, they will turn cannibalistic. They will turn on each other and eat each other. It's a normal thing, it will happen in ponds, it happens in tanks, it does happen, um, but it's not normally something that you really want to happen in a controlled environment like this. So make sure you do give them extra food. For the most part, they will eat algae that's growing in the tank. But if they do start getting hungry, they will turn on each other. And it's not something we like to see, so make sure you give them enough food. Well, thank you very much for watching today. I've had a really good time. I hope you've enjoyed it too. We've had a lot of information packed into one episode this time. So if you have any questions, please do put them in the comment section. I'll be more than happy to answer them. And make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can come back next week to see how they've developed and whether we can find anything else interesting to talk about as well. So hopefully I will see you then. Goodbye.